Is your microwave failing to heat? Well, today on The Chemist DIY, we're going to run through a few troubleshooting techniques that might help you resolve your problem and then some. Stay tuned right after this. Alright, so what we have in front of us here is an LG microwave. It is a 2.2 cubic foot microwave. Now, the person who previously owned it was going to throw it away, and they were claiming that the microwave was no longer heating the food. Now, taking a look at this microwave, it is in excellent condition, and these are quite pricey, coming in around two to $300 for such a large microwave. And I thought to myself, well, why not take it and see if I can repair it and maybe possibly use it as a shop microwave. So what I went ahead and did already was remove the top cover. Now, some microwavers are a, little, are a little bit different when, when removing the top cover. Um, they have about 8 to 11 bolts up on top or screws and some are Torx bit and others are Phillips drive. So go ahead and take a look at yours to see what it is you need to remove uh, that top cover. But I already went ahead and did that. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in and test it out and see if it is true. Maybe uh, just from transporting back and forth, uh, something was loose and wiggled and made contact and it could quite possibly be working at this moment. So I'm going to go ahead and put a cup in here at the moment and test it out and see if it actually is still warming or not functioning at all. All right, so the microwave is plugged in and I'm not quite sure if you can see that, but we do have two LED lights on indicating that the front panel is working. So that's a good sign right there that uh, we are not having issues with the front panel. Hopefully that continues on through through this review. So what I went ahead and did is got myself some nice tap water here and we're going to take a temperature reading uh, before and after to see if this microwave is actually working. So I'm going to go ahead and take that temperature reading now. And this is regular tap water, cold tap water right out the tap. And it's currently reading 65.5 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, that is the temperature now. So we're going to go ahead and place that in the microwave and give it a test. And put that on for about two minutes and see if it warms up. All right, so our microwave is done. Let's go ahead and remove the coffee cup from the microwave and see if it has actually heated. Taking another temperature reading. And we are still at 65.5 Fahrenheit. So, um, yes, it is true this microwave is not heating. But the good thing is we saw a lot of functions actually operate. The turntable was spinning. That's a good sign. We did have an uh, LCD display here. The microwave powered on. We heard the um, transformer or uh, magnetron actually working. So we got a lot of positive functions going on here. And we know that... Uh, it might be something minor or a part that needs to be replaced. So we're going to go ahead and unplug it and move to checking out some of the things that uh, we need to look at. All right, so the first thing you want to take a look at um, are the switches that actually activate the microwave. Um, and for most part, most microwaves usually have about two to three switches on the back side here. And these switches are pressed by these arms. Now, you're going to want to go ahead and check out these arms and see if they're not cracked in any way or maybe worn down from over time for over usage. These seem to be perfectly fine. And when we close the door, this activates those switches and it's a safety mechanism so that you can't turn on the microwave and expose yourself to the radiation. So that's the first thing you're going to want to go ahead and check out. So if we go ahead and spin this around, let's look at the back side. You can see one, two, and again, this microwave has three switches here that we need to check out. And that's the first thing we're going to go ahead and, and do. Okay, so you have two, type of switch, two types of switches, and they're no, either one's going to be normally open or normally closed. Now, you're not going to be able to tell that until you actually test the switch, but uh, I just want it to be known that uh, your uh, results may vary depending on your microwave. Now, we're going to go ahead and remove the connectors from each, of one, each one of these uh, switches right here that you see and test to see if the switch is actually functioning. I'm going to go ahead and take my pliers here. Now the microwave is unplugged and it's always best to work with the microwave unplugged. And so we're going to go ahead and remove that connector there. And as you can see, we have two prongs, one on top and one on bottom. I'm going to go ahead and connect up my multimeter here. And uh, it's set just to tone stuff out. So as soon as it makes contact, we get a beep. So we're going to know that that switch is actually functioning. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click onto the bottom one here and test the top one. And as you can see right now we have nothing and that is because the door is open. So once I close this door, that's going to close the switch and we should hear a tone. Okay. So you don't actually have to remove the switch in order to test it is my point here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that one and move on to the next. Okay, so I went ahead and removed both terminals there. I'm going to go ahead and test. And this is a switch that is normally closed. So when we go ahead and close the door, this switch would turn off. Okay, so that switch is actually functioning. Let's go ahead and move down to the last one here. Okay, our connectors are off. We're going to go ahead and attach and touch the switch. No noise. We're going to go ahead and close that door. And now we have just confirmed that all three switches are fully functional. Now this is very important. Now I did in the past have a microwave that I worked on where the um, switch was not actually being pressed in by the arm and when you went ahead and turned on the microwave it actually blew the circuit breaker. So it's very important that you perform this and make sure that your switches are actually working. All right, so the next thing we want to test is our thermal fuse. Now, thermal fuses can be found on microwaves and they can also be found on dryers. So if your dryer is not actually heating, it could be a possibility of the thermal fuse has blown. So we're gonna go ahead and pull off these terminals here and um, test out this thermal fuse. Now, the thermal fuse is actually, again, a protection circuit and it's gonna cut off ground to our transformer here. So again, we're gonna use our, our multimeter here using our tone out function and we're gonna test and see if we have continuity. Now, if, if we put this on here and we get a tone, this switch is good. There we go. We've just confirmed that the thermal fuse is good. Now, your microwave may be different. It may have one, it may have two. Just be on the lookout for an item that looks like this and go ahead and test it out. All right, so that we cover all bases of this repair process. Um, if when you go ahead and plug in your microwave and you actually get no power to the front LCD panel, you open the door, the light doesn't come on, what have you, you may want to go ahead and check the fuse on the back of this board. Now, it may be in a different location uh, depending on your microwave, but in our instance, it is attached to this board here, our distribution, and it is going to be a 20 amp fuse. You can go ahead and test that with the continuity, but uh, since we went ahead and powered on our unit, we know that this is not any a concern of ours at this point, so we're going to go ahead and move forward on with the rest of this process. All right, for our next portion of our test, we're gonna go ahead and test the transformer to see if it's actually receiving the correct amount of AC current to the primary side of the transformer. Now, coming from our relay in this location right here, this is gonna go ahead and prove that we are actually getting voltage through the relay here and the relay is not malfunctioning in itself and we're getting the AC current from the home, 115 to 120 volts. And we're going to go ahead and see that on our digital multimeter here set to AC current to uh, I have it right now set to 200 volts and I'm going to go ahead and um, put my probes on these two prongs right here now uh, for all this instances you're going to want to go ahead and take uh, precaution here and uh, go ahead and discharge your capacitor by simply uh, placing your needle nose pliers in there and shorting both sides out being sure that you're using an insulated pair of pliers here as well as an insulated pair of gloves. So I've already gone ahead and done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect up my probes now. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the microwave so we can see the voltage. Okay, our microwave is plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and see if we are receiving the correct amount of voltage here. Okay, as you can see, our relay is working and we are receiving voltage down to the primary side of our transformer. Now you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and stay away from this side of the transformer. Um, once we go ahead and disconnect this, once we remove power here, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and discharge that capacitor once again so you don't receive a nasty shock. All right, so 
in all microwaves, you're going to have a one-way diode and you're also going to have your capacitor. Now, the capacitor is currently charged, so you want to be sure uh, to be careful when you are actually doing this. We're going to go ahead and remove the diode first and then remove the leads here off of the uh, capacitor and then discharge the capacitor. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So our capacitor is off. Now you'll take note that uh, the capacitor is attached to one side. You're going to want to make sure it returns back to that side when you are finished uh, installing it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off, put that aside, and I'm going to test that at a later time. Right now we're going to go ahead and remove the wire leads here. And again, taking note to be super cautious because the capacitor is charged at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and take my pair of pliers and carefully remove the pump. Okay, so now that our two leads are removed, we're going to go ahead and discharge the capacitor by inserting our coated pliers. And it's very important that you have, you take extreme caution when doing this. Okay, so now that our capacitor is discharged, we're going to go ahead and test both the diode and the capacitor. I'm going to go ahead and put one probe here on one side of the capacitor, and I'm going to go ahead and tap the opposite side. And I have my multimeter set to um, farads, so we can actually read, and it's actually on two farads. Now, I happen to know that this capacitor is a one microfarad, so we should be around in the ballpark of one. And there we go. Now we've confirmed that our uh, capacitor is working. We're going to go ahead and test the diode to make sure that that is functioning as well. Okay, so I have my diode right here in hand. And taking a look at the outside body, I can see that the diode is actually not split and is in good condition. We're going to go ahead and test it with a 9 volt battery. Now, being that it is a diode, it should only show uh, voltage in one direction. So I have my negative lead of my digital multimeter here set on the negative side of the battery. And I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and contact the positive side and take a test to see if it is flowing in one direction and one direction only. So as I go ahead and test that, we can see that we're roughly receiving a voltage there, a little bit low. Uh, on that side, but we're going to go ahead and flip it over and make sure that we don't have continuity in the opposite direction. If we do, this diode is bad and needs replacing. Okay, so we are receiving voltage in both directions and that is confirmation that this diode is bad and we're going to go ahead and have to replace that. Okay, so the, for the next part of this test, we're going to go ahead and remove the magnetron. And I'm just going to simply remove the four bolts that hold it in. Uh, one, two, three, and four up on top here. Let's go ahead and do that now so that we can test and inspect. Okay, so we have the magnetron now out and uh, giving it a quick visual inspection. We want to go ahead and look and see if any of these mags in here are cracked or damaged in any sort of way. And looking at this side, we can kind of see that it's a little bit dirty here and that may be due to the fan. Um, but as you can see, a lot of these things in here are broken and that shouldn't be so this may be our actual problem here. Now, I do have an extra magnetron sitting over here. Let me go ahead and pull that out for you guys and show you what the magnetron is supposed to look like. As you can see, none of these fins actually move in any way. And the magnets are all nice, clean, and intact. No harm shaking it. We get no rattling sound as opposed to this one. 
So this may be the issue of why our microwave is not heating. So there are other tests to do for this, but which I have found inconclusive myself in doing. Uh, I've, from my experience, 90% of the time it is going to be your magnetron that is going to be the issue of why your ma your microwave is not heating. So I'm going to go ahead and test it according to what you probably have seen on YouTube and so you can see for yourself that uh, sometimes um, these tests are inconclusive when you're doing your own uh, testing. So we're going to go ahead and put this on our multimeter and put this on ohms. Now as you may have done your research, um, most people will tell you that when you connect it here and here you are supposed to read a value somewhere in the lines of uh, 0 0.00 or I'm sorry 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 and the highest maybe 0.3 that you're supposed to be receiving now as you can see here we have a 0.2 uh, flickering back and forth now um, if we go ahead and switch that over to our magnetron that we know that it's experiencing now an issue uh, which could possibly or potentially be the problem. Um, we're going to go ahead and switch that out. And as we connect it up to here, you can see that our values are still the same. All right. Now you also may have seen the test where you take one lead off and place it to the body of the magnetron or ground. And of course we get nothing. Okay. And the same goes for the opposite side of the lead. Okay. And this is the way it's supposed to function. Now if we do that with the good unit that we know that is brand new and perfectly fine again we get what we're supposed to be getting so in all essence with these tests this is supposed to indicate between a good and bad magnetron we're going to go ahead and install this magnetron right now and see if we actually do get some type of heating going on in the microwave. So let's go ahead and take one more test of our water here. And as you can see, we are at 66.5. Let's go ahead and start the microwave up in about two minutes and let's see what we get. Our water is all done. Let's go ahead and pour it out and see if it's actually working. One forty-three. I'd say that's working. All right, guys. So there you have it. A quick, rip, easy repair uh, with a few tools: digital multimeter, uh, you know, screwdriver, Phillips driver, whatever it is that you need. Uh, don't forget if your microwave has those torque bits that you're going to want to go ahead and purchase those as well. If you don't have them, we also used a nine volt battery to test out our uh, diode over there and a pair of pliers. And uh, always be cautious when you're working around high voltage uh, components here, such as the microwave. Now we went ahead and found out that the um, even after testing our um, magnetron here it still tested fine but when we pulled it off we actually uncovered an additional problem of this thing rattling around and um, 
that proved to us that the magnetron was actually bad, uh, shouldn't rattle at any, at any point uh, when you remove it. Um, if you happen to go and are doing some YouTube research and you see those tests being performed, don't let that be an uh, all, uh, all, be all type of uh, result for you where it actually leads you down the wrong path. So go ahead and remove it, give it a shake. Make sure you check the condition of your uh, magnetron and make sure it's good as well as test it. Um, we also found out that the dial was bad as well and what probably happened was the dial probably failed and caused our magnetron to fail as well. So at any rate guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to give me a, a like and subscribe and, and share and uh, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Let me know how I'm doing. If I can help you out, please post your comments down below and I'll be willing to help out in any way I possibly can. Uh, if you are interested in any of these products, uh, go ahead and jump down to the description section below where you will find the link to the repair clinic website where you can purchase all of your parts. Now here is a pro tip for you guys. Uh, for who, those of you who stuck around this long, when you go onto the repair clinic website and you enter your model number of your appliance there, um, you're going to find your actual product. Take that product number over to Amazon and you will probably get it for about $20 to $30 cheaper. So for a Magnetron, uh, for this Megatron, uh, it was listed at uh, $71 on the repair clinic website uh, with taxes. You know, it's going to come out to roughly about uh, $80 to $85. Uh, I went ahead and took that number over to Amazon and found this Magnetron for $31. The diode here uh, actually was $11 on the Repair Clinic website and I found that on Amazon for $5. So save yourself a few bucks, go ahead and uh, do your research and uh, spend your money wisely. As always, I've been The Chemist, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you in the next one.